And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, coming to us all the way from Black Rose Comics, creator of the upcoming Cerebrum Volume 1, going a little bit cyberpunk up in this, the one and only David Dominguez. How are you doing today, man? Uh, man I'm fine, man. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for, thanks for coming up to the temple. Um, so as I understand it, Cerebrum Volume 1 is a, is a cyberpunk work. Now, it is. There's, this leads me to a couple questions because I always like to start with the humble beginnings. Mm-hmm. When, where did, where did the um, writing bug really start start to bite you? And for you, what's the draw with um, cyberpunk? Mm. So this uh, particular story hit up around three, four years ago, and I was. You know, I was just, uh, I was already writing during that time. So it was when when I first started writing, it was roughly like 10, 10, 11 years ago. And, uh, it was, I was still in school at the time and I was, you know, reading a lot of, uh, a lot of these, uh, YA novels. Uh, (laughs) uh, but, uh, yeah, I, um, I was like, this is fun. I like reading. I want to. I want to get my hands on writing. And then, uh, I just sat my butt down on this on a chair and I just started. You know, mm-hmm. just listening to some podcasts in the back and getting into it. And I quickly found out that I really enjoyed it. I more so really enjoyed writing comic book scripts. And then uh, this idea. Uh, of uh, Cerebrum came into my head about, you know, what if I, you know, because during the time I was watching Black Lagoon and that was set during the 80s. Black Lagoon is a bombastic anime just filled with a bunch of violence and it was really great, you know. (laughs) I really like the uh, the way that Madhouse took a a lot of um, uh, uh, dynamic angles with it and the way that they uh they uh just let all the action go mm-hmm. it was really great and hey and it's, a ra- like, it's a rare case where madhouse actually got to finish something yeah yeah kind of because it's still going <laughs> uh but uh ooh, uh cerebrum then came around and then i was like what if i took black lagoon with ghost in the shell and blade runner I literally blew my fucking mind, and I was like, "All right, I'm fucking jotting this down. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, clear out my table and just start brainstorming everything that I want to happen in this world, how it runs. Because this is this is this is my writing style. I I empty out a table. I lay down pieces of paper, at least six, and I brainstorm." Uh, Every single complex to minuscule aspect of this world. That's just so I can keep up with consistency. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I go into the scripts. Then I come up with the with the uh, the characters, the designs, the way that they speak, their personalities. I go really, really deep with this, and I fell in love with it super quick. And. This um, this world just came into fruition in a matter of uh, of uh, months because it does take me a long time to plan. Mm-hmm. Oh, Rome wasn't built in a day. It was not. <laughs> Ooh. But now I can now I can I can certainly get I can certainly get the idea of of combining um. Mm-hmm. Combining combining genres in that manner, but um, what I did what I did want to kind of hit the to hit at the heart of is cyberpunk is a is a genre that can be taken a whole lot of ways. Um, yeah, it's very flexible. And of course, of course, the um, 
the way cyberpunk is approached in um, in the U.S. and in and in Europe is a lot different than the way it w than the perspective that it was approached in Japan, especially given mm -hmm. that eighties Japan had that whole economic bubble that um that made them into a powerhouse. Um, but for you, what what is the appeal of a genre like cyberpunk? Like, what what is the thing that you take out of it? The environment, the neon lights, uh, just the 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 pure aesthetic of it. Uh, it's it's mostly just um, it's mostly superficial. I I just love the look of it, and I figured this this needs this needs more oomph to it. And most of these uh, cyberpunk stories usually dwell within this whole um, a soul within a soul, if you catch my drift. Mm -hmm. And I, it does have some action in it, but it's not mo it's not mostly you know this high octane level of like let me just turn my brain off and enjoy. Most of it just delves within like what does it mean to be a, a human. Uh, like going back to the soul within the soul, mm -hmm. they even did that in the Cyberpunk 2077 game. They did it in Blade Runner. They did it in Ghost in the Shell. They even did it in the live action Ghost in the Shell. And I feel like that has already been done enough. I just want to see some badass characters, you know, with some cool ass cybernetics, uh, over the top villains, high octane action boss of the wall that's what i want to see now mm -hmm. now when it when it comes to when it, come, when it comes to that style of action you've mentioned you mentioned um Bla you mentioned black lagoon um mm -hmm. were there were there any other were there any other particular st particular styles of action particular styles of action that you um that you drew inspiration from and how how ex I know you mentioned your writing style, but how? But do you end up consuming a lot of media in terms of research? <clears throat> yes, um, most of it is just um, live action. Some novels, um, the original, uh, the original Blade Runner novel, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of anime, <laughs> but. When it comes to the look of the of the comic, uh, I took a lot of inspiration for for the uh, the action scenes to become more fluid. I was I was reading up a lot of uh, the Breaker, which is a a, a Korean manhwa, mm -hmm. and it has some of the most fluid action sequences done on paper, and. And it blew my mind that this it hasn't become, you know, an anime or anything live action yet. It's it is um, one of my, one of the most uh, in terms of the look uh, for the fight and the actions, uh, the action scenes, <clears throat> the breaker I take most uh, inspiration from. Which is interesting because I I haven't heard anybody mention the breaker in years. Oh, it is sorely underrated, sorely underrated. Although, I think one could, I think um, there could be there could be like a two there could be like a two year class just on um manhwa and manhwa that are that are very very um under underrated. Um, right. But that's that's certainly one of them. I. I credit a, I credit the the now defunct Infinity Studios for for a few other examples such as um, um, Zero and um, Chun Rang Shur Shun, and I'm pretty sure I botched the pronunciation, but I but unfortunately I have too much of an accent. <laughs> oh man! But when it but when it comes to When it come, but when it comes, when it comes to when it comes to that 
to that to that approach. Um, something something else I'm I'm curious about is with the, with this particular comic, um, are you pl are you planning on going mostly black and white with it? Because that the majority of the images that I see in the preview page are on the black and white end of things. Well, I am going to be running this on Indiegogo, mm -hmm. and if we do hit a big enough of a stretch goal, uh, then it will definitely go into colors. Mm -hmm. uh, it will delay the fulfillment, but it's going to have a, a mass. It's going to be a, a massive improvement in terms of just like eye popping mm -hmm. uh, quality towards it. You know, because it's cyberpunk, neon lights, colorful characters, vibrancy. That's what I like seeing, mm -hmm. and you know, it it almost it really does warrant to have color. It's just you know at the moment, uh, funding is a bit of an issue. Um, but uh, yeah, my co-host uh, Phoenix Animation, you know, he's helping me out because he believes in the project as well. Uh, the the stimulus is actually going to come in soon, and that's going to really help me out too. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, it, it'll definitely be in color if we if we hit the stretch goal. All right. What that will be, I I'm probably guessing perhaps 15k. Crossing fingers, uh, I am working my ass off to get as many eyes as I can. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so far, it is uh, it, it's kind of getting there. I mean, I got six months to you know get a lot more eyes on the project you know six months i can gain a big traction uh just just uh it is a lot of work it is a lot of shilling it is a it is it is fun mm -hmm. and if you're not having fun with this you know you're you're, you're in the wrong business <laughs> yeah like i can i can obviously see see that this 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 is a creative venture, venture when it comes when it comes to just be, when it comes to just being fun. Now, um, the the when it now when it comes to the sit the city because given it given its given its origins, um, having cyberpunk in a city is is almost a almost a requirement, especially a city mm -hmm. that looks that looks like a labyrinth. To the point where I've made the comparison between that and the labyrinth of Greek myth. Um, right. Were are I know you I know you mentioned an emphasis on action. Are you when it comes to your sense of action? Are you aiming for more of for more of the action that one would see in a film noir, or the action that one would see in um, in say John, in say John Woo's work, or the kind of styles that John Woo inspired? Ooh, definitely John Woo. Because I really, I really enjoy the high octane, you know, speed lines, uh, especially like the ones that you see in in the Breaker. Mm -hmm. uh, those uh, those punches come at you really fast, <laughs> and the way that the uh, the um, that the author drew it, it it's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. I really, I really like those type of works. Yeah. yeah. Now, at the t at the top of the preview page for the for the Indiegogo, um, it talks about the two brothers, um, Anthony and Michael, being labeled as damaged. Mm -hmm. Now, something something I'm curious about on on that is it is it a case where it's where it's a social stigma, or is it a case where they where um. Where they ended up getting they ended up getting cybernetics to not be damaged, but those cybernetics don't come cheap. Uh, it, it is definitely a social stigma. Uh, I'm actually, glad you caught up on that. Um, once uh, you are labeled damaged, you're pretty much seen as worthless, useless, bottom of the barrel. Um, as as soon as you hit that label, you know you. You really need to be connected in order to either remotely survive in this uh, world. Mm -hmm. um, that's why they end up, you know, doing what they end up doing later in the book, um, especially Anthony more so uh, getting involved with the underworld of crime that goes on in there. Uh, that is going to be uh, explored in 
and other issues, but it is it is one of the uh, massive subplots. Yeah. Now, when it comes when it comes to the underworld in this city, is it a case where that where um you have where you have a myriad of or you have kind of the pyra- a, a pyramid set up where you have at the lowest rung the gangs, then the more organized end of things, and then above that the corpse. Or do you have a different hierarchy in mind? Um, something similar to that. Definitely going to have your your main syndicate, which contains five separate uh, oh, quote unquote gangs or mafias. But uh, you know, going into the whole you know corrupt governments. That will be explored in other volumes, but but right now I'm just solely, you know, building the the stepping stones towards that because this is very much like GTA in a way where you're uh, advancing through basically being a grunt to you know uh, running up that hierarchy. All right, and. Within the, within that, since, since you met, since you mentioned um, since you mentioned GTA, um, obviously within a lot within a lot of Grand Theft Auto and a lot of crime fiction, you have a lot of factioning within the within the within um, the gangs and organizations. Certain places that are the territory of certain of certain gangs and factions and doing jobs. Obviously, in in the gamest sense, doing jobs for them gets you respect for the and um appreci- and um a bit of an alignment when it comes to those gangs and within within um these within the setting that you have with the city that you've got do you have a do you have a similar approach where there are, where um parts of the city are sectioned off as the territory of certain as certain factions Yes, definitely. I do have a map in mind uh, that I still need to have my artists go into. Um, and that also goes into uh, the other subplot of this uh, this first arc is that, you know, there is a uh, basically a secret cult that's kind of, you know, fucking shit up for these people. And they're not happy. They want to uh, have these people, you know, eliminated, and uh, that's uh, it, it. Almost turns into an accidental job for the main characters, and this is how they be uh, essentially, you know, come together. So in the beginning, they're they they're uh, separate separate individuals until you know circumstances brings them together until. You know, ultimately, they have to go and beat up, uh, beat the bad guy mm-hmm. of the uh, story. Yeah. But the main syndicate of the story isn't of the uh, of the of the city. Isn't necessarily their enemy, but neither their friend. All right, that may- <laughs> that I can cer- I can certainly see making sense, especially since in this kind of setup, you have ev- you essentially have a whole lot of people who. Aren't exactly friends, but they are. But they are. But they are associates at best. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like the uh, the relationship between uh, Mr. Chang and Balalaika. Mm-hmm. Like, neat. And of course, if things if things went south, they <laughs> they would neither would neither would um, hesitate to stab the other one in the back, also known as the Roman handshake. Right. <laughs> Now, within within that, you're go you're going for about fifty. You're going for about fifty pages, and something I'm something I'm curious about is with even though this is the first volume, are you are you setting up this volume with a act structure? Yes, this uh, volume one is the first in a trilogy f- per every arc. So the number of arcs will, you know, it'll just come in um, 
as long as I can keep creating them. Mm -hmm. But every arc will have a trilogy of volumes. Uh, originally, it was supposed to be a uh, a single 100-page volume, but then you know somebody gave me the idea of uh, splitting the book. That way, you know it's you know it's a bit cheaper to make and cheaper to print. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But then I got the idea of you know maybe this will just give me more pages to have fun with. And that that brings me to that brings me to another question in regard to, in regard to the page count sometimes sometimes especially with especially with crowdfunded comics there'll usually be a few pages that are that are set aside for extras not necessarily not necessarily story beats but just but just extra material whether it be um whether it be concept sketches or the like are you planning on setting a, a few pages aside for that kind of thing Oh yeah, I think it almost warrants it, just so that you know, uh, the reader can see, you know, uh, uh, the the different uh, characters that are within this particular volume, their descriptions, as well as you know, little tidbits of the city, kind of like you know, um, have you seen Attack on Titan the anime? Yes. So basically, like those little tidbits at the um, at the uh, the eye catcher. So it'll it'll I'll definitely you know give you like little nuggets of uh, of uh, what goes uh, about this uh, the city the inner workings, uh, the the currencies, uh, the the different factions of between the uh, uh, the syndicate as well as um, uh, def I'm definitely gonna have the map, but in volume two, mm -hmm. so that'll be its own page there. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have like little bits of extras, uh, just so that you know the reader can you know, just just, just the little things to have fun with. Yeah. yeah. And when it comes to the when it comes to the um, the built the building of the, the building of the city, some, something I'm curious about is there are certain there are certain creators who will create a setting first and then and then write out the characters that inhabit that setting and there are some who will do it the opposite on that spectrum where would you say you fall into uh definitely the city first uh like i said before that's uh my writing style uh just so that i can keep consistency within the story and then i move on to the characters uh, their design and then their personalities the way they they speak um that's uh, that alone just took uh, I think three months in total. <laughs> mm -hmm. it took a lot of time and like um, just uh, just trying to keep into uh, just trying to keep the world together without you know taking too much from other places. And when it comes when it comes to that whole taking too much from other places. Have there been any instances you can think of where you um where you end where you ended up scrapping a um a particular line of a particular line of story or some or something like that because you felt it was a little too similar to your inspirations? Um not exactly, more so like it took too many pages um away from the uh from exposition. So I basically uh, wrote too much uh, action, and then I uh, scrapped at least ten pages, just so I can fit in more dialogue to explain just things in general. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But there was a couple things that did feel a bit similar to uh, to Alita Battle Angel, and that was the whole uh, concept of uh, the Huntsman. So I kind of just, uh, I was like, oh, maybe I don't want to do that. So I just basically, I just, I just threw it away. Mm -hmm. I, which I can certainly get, I can certainly uh, get that. Now, something, something else that varies from author to author when it comes to the discussion of the discussion of cyberpunk is the love is the level of technology. Now, Obviously, looking at the cover art that you've got, 
we already ha we already have a fair amount of um cybernetics what with, what with him having his whole arm his whole arm replaced and a bit and a bit of an arm blade um how co how commonplace are are cybernetics in the, in this particular universe is it a case where they're they're accessible but they're not ch they're not cheap or is it a, or is it a case where they where they're um where to varying degrees of quality they're almost omnipresent both uh it's it's um it's something that i thought about it's but at the same time you know it's it's this is also going to you know get into the whole damage bit what does it mean to be damaged you know just because you have a, a piece of cybernetic a lot of this uh, uh of the uh the more higher end of the the cybernetics you can't even tell uh so, so let's say like somebody from a uh, first class family you you they you'll other people will know that they have cybernetics it's just you know the the lower echelon won't mm. uh it's more so to keep up the whole uh the whole uh um what was that uh um the um the whole social uh hierarchy the whole social hierarchy yeah but the way that the 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 public views them which if that, that that i'd say that that definitely makes sense mm. Now, when it comes now when it comes to the, when it comes to that hierarchy, um, it's interesting that you mentioned that since some sometimes um, hierarchy is hierarchy is represented by some by a more literal or overt approach. You especially see this in um, in more dystopian takes on cyberpunk. Is that something that's at pl that's at play here, or is it, or is it a little bit less overt? And obviously it's definitely it's definitely a little less overt because I'm not trying to get into um, uh, what what the society what, what society in this um, in this setting uh, looks at people yet, but uh, definitely right now it's it's, it's more going to be. Um, more heavily action based. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to get into pretty much any of the deeper stuff until Volume Three. Now, I mean, uh, not Volume Three, uh, Mark Three. Yeah. Now, speak, speaking of action. Now, I know you've I know you've mentioned um, Black Black Lagoon as one as one of your inspiration. Black Lagoon and the Breaker as your inspirations for action, but. I want to try and I want to try and do the difficult thing and br and break down how you v how you view an action scene. Some a break and this sort of breakdown thing I haven't done since the last time I watched Old Boy, <laughs> which for the record everyone should watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just the original version, not the not that not that dumbass version by Spike Lee. We don't talk about that. <laughs> um but when but when it comes to how, when it comes to how you break down and how you how you perceive action in your in this work um what is what is the anatomy of the things that you try and emphasize and the things you try and avoid uh definitely having it look too cartoony um i uh i have told my artists numerous numerous times that um that uh, continuity is very important, and if I see a, a mistake, I'm gonna want to have that re redone. So I have a very specific uh, way that I want to see something. So I, uh, I, I storyboard it myself, and then I tell, I basically tell my artist uh, whether or not I want this to be done uh, exactly like this or not. And more often than time, more often than not, you know, he delivers quality. Uh, and um, 
you know, the way that I would go about it is I would go, I would draw stick figures and then I would flesh it out more, you know, with speed lines and um, see what we can come up with. And if I don't like the panel, then I'll just, you know, ask, I'll, I'll tell my artist, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and redo that this in this in a different way or in a different, uh, in a, di- a different angle. Mm-hmm. And the times where I tell him, let's do this at a different angle. He just, I don't know how he does it or, or how, um, uh, how he gets some of these angles, but <laughs> it's like if he, he, uh, has like one of those, um, uh, those figure, like these really high end figures that have, uh, mm-hmm. 12, 24 different joints on it. And then he just takes a picture of it and then he just draws that. I don't know if he's doing that, but Damn, he he knows exactly what I want to see. And when it comes, yeah. now you had said that you that that you wanted yeah. to avoid things looking too cartoony. Um, mm-hmm. What exactly do you mean by that? Because there's a lot of ways I could take that. Uh, more so in like the over exaggerated. Uh, uh, facial features. So I basically tell him, let's go with a little bit um, less facial lines, because I, I really want my uh, my characters to to feel like they're losing a bit of their own humanity every time they're uh, they're out on the field. So I basically want them to, you know, every, every at every step, just to have them somewhat be a bit stoic about it. All right, I can. And that's what. Which I can. Um, I can certainly. I can certainly see that. Espe- especially one, especially given the kind of story that you're telling, and two, the kind of um. Appro- the kind of approach that you're that you're mi- that you're making. Now. When it. When it comes to the the layout of um of panels, um. Obviously, something that I did notice is some of the, is the way you have a very, at least with the few in, images that I've seen, there's a very angular approach to the way panels are are laid out instead of instead of something a bit more um, a bit more rigid or a bit more structured. Um, mm-hmm. The extreme of the extreme version of that, of course, would be the three by three grid attitude that guy, guys like Alan Moore have. Um, when it came to when it came to th- that particular angled approach to panel setting, was that su- was that something that was the suggestion of your artist, or was that something that you fell in on? Uh, my artist. So basic. Whenever I send him a storyboard, it looks very much like a traditional comic book. Well, w- a Western comic book, mm-hmm. and I submit that to my artist, and then he goes in and says. Okay, I'm gonna move this here, and then I'm gonna move this one like that. I'm gonna send you the pencils for it later, and you know if anything needs to be changed, then I can totally do that. Uh, it, it makes it easier that he is a digital artist, uh, so any changes that can be made, uh, we can do it on a fly just like that in an instant. All right, and in some now, when it comes when it comes to your artist, how did were were the two of have the two of you been more or less working on this from the get go, or was it a case where you approached him about this um, comic idea that you had? Uh, I found him on a Facebook group <laughs> that I uh, initially ended up getting banned from, I, <laughs> and the, I didn't even know I got banned from there. But uh, I guess I made too much noise on Twitter that it kind of bled into the Facebook group. And um, yeah, being CG not is uh, it can kind of I don't want to say be a detriment, but it, it can definitely you know kind of hurt your chances at finding another artist on a particular group, especially if those mods aren't very, you know, friendly. But, um, but yeah, my artist is, um, he has been nothing but, but uh, a great, a great person to work with. Mm-hmm. 
As as far as far as get as far as getting bit as far as getting banned from from a for, from a forum, well, all I can say is you're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we um we tend to uh we tend to be a lot nicer mm -hmm. than the ones that do the banning. Like as far. Look, I, look. I have I have a short book in in the in the back of my office of all of all the forums that have been, that have banned me for one reason or another, or some non-forum places, like Starbucks. <laughs> mm. Um. Now, the now the um the the uh, sorry, sorry, I was about to say Kickstarter force a habit, but the in, the um, Indiegogo is currently in preview mode when do you, when do you plan on um opening the thing up proper so that so that people can deep dive into the thing we will be going live um probably in late august if everything goes well uh i will be launching it on on my channel first and then uh on the same day, probably on another channel. It, it's it still needs to be. Uh, I'm still working on that, but um, you know, I I think uh, I think things will go through uh, smoothly. Mm -hmm. But I'm definitely looking at an August launch. Oh, for, how fit, how fitting that'd be right, that'd be right around the time of my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> now. When it com now, when it comes, t I've seen some. I've seen some people in in their particular books get a little bit creative with um pa with page size, especially especially if the especially if they want if they want to go a bit art artsy or they or they're too used to doing a web a web based approach. Um, but I'm guessing you're I'm guessing you're going to be going with the standard A4 um size when it comes to when it comes to pages. Yeah, it's it's definitely gonna have that traditional look to it. You know, nothing too fancy about it. You know, it's just I just want to have something out there that I can be proud of. Yeah. And given the fact that you're go that you're going with um that you're going with fi you're going with fifty pages, um, with that with that kind of page size, I could see I could see there be there there being a potential issue of um fin of finishing a given story while before with um with that's under the um, under the amount of pages that you are shooting for um have you pl have you planned for that sort of thing and what sort of contingency do you have if there's a case where your a um certain part of a story has run its course but you but you still have pages um well i've been uh writing this for a while so I'm I have a pretty clear cut of not running into that sort of issue mm -hmm. uh, I'm definitely gonna stick to the the 50 page story count but uh, I'll definitely have extras in there just to, just to like fill out uh, just to fill out the spine and make sure everything is running smoothly on it. I don't want things to be falling out or <laughs> anything like that. All right, I I can cer I can certainly get that. And I know that I know that you had meant that you had mentioned um do doing doing it in kind of an act structure, but but in that regard are you going to be putting in a table of contents early on in the book? Mm, no, not necessarily. I don't. I don't think for this particular story or the way that I'm formatting it would really need it. All right, I can. I can certainly. Yes, I can certainly see the the good possibility of a definite maybe of that of that particular approach. <laughs> um. But with all with all of that with all of that said. I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come up to come up to the temple and enjoy the insanity that that takes place here. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Um, I am. 
you know, if you really want, I mean, oh God, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm open to doing this again as many times as you like. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I know this is a bit of a short one. I could go longer. I can talk about Cerebrum and the future that it holds. Uh, (laughs) Today is kind of a a, a weird jumble of uh, balancing schedule. So, uh, again, (laughs) thank you for uh, tolerating my boomerisms earlier. (laughs) Believe me me when I say you, um, there there are people that we've had in the temple in the past that vastly out boomer you oh oh damn oh. both figuratively and very very literally i'm <laughs> <laughs> i hate i hate to do the whole i've seen it all because it because i because i'm not from new york but mm-hmm. at the same t- at the same time um someone someone boomerang is no, is nothing new for me <laughs> but yeah, I'd lo- I'd love to have I'd love to have you back, whether it's to discuss more on Cerebrum, to delve into Cyberpunk, or just to shitpost. <laughs> Dude, I'm all for that. You know, I do that on my pay- on my own uh, channel as well, mostly on the uh, on the uh, Sunday streams. Uh, I basically gather a bunch of uh, other CG creators, and we just shill our own books, or you know, shoot the shit. I mean. Uh, a couple of hangout streams ago, we were talking about quackas in uh, in Australia <laughs> and how they throw their own babies at predators to avoid being eaten themselves. Well, it is Australia, where everything yeah. wants to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but with but with that said, um, as I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>